Hallelujah. Amen. Let's be seated. Hallelujah. What a privilege that we have to worship our Father. Not from a distance, but from up close. It's indeed a privilege. Hallelujah. It's a privilege. We're not worshiping our Father from the outer court. We are not worshipping our Father from the holy place. We are worshipping our Father from the most holy place. And it's a place of proximity. Our Father is no longer a distant reality to us. That barrier has been removed. Hallelujah. The barrier has been removed. And it's such a great, great, great privilege. And Father, we will never take this for granted. We will never take your proximity for granted. We will never take the gift of access for granted. We know what this means. We know what this entails. We know how we're required to comport ourselves in the most holy place. Because it's a place of measured movement. It's a place of death to self. It's a place of death to self. It's a place where there's only one option. And that option is you. We know the protocol of the most holy place, Father. And we will not take it for granted. We know the protocol of the most holy place. We will not flout it. And so, Father, beyond what you're offering you with our lips, Father, we worship you with our lives. We honor you with our lives. And it gives us such honor and privilege to worship you. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, God. In Jesus' mighty name. And your brothers again today, our hearts are open to receive from you. As you speak, Father, help us to become. We understand where you are in the spirit. We understand that you're collapsing time. As it was in the beginning, in Genesis, when you began to create, when you said, let there be light, there was light. There was nothing holding back the fulfillment of your word. Same way, Father, we have prepared our heart for you. That as you speak, we become. As you speak, we become. As you speak, we become. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for grace that you are set to release to us today. Thank you for empowerment. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for upgrade. Thank you, Father, for increased capacity that is coming to us today. Father, we give you praise. And we're ready, Father, to receive all that you have for us today in the name of Jesus. The channels of our spirit are open. They are open. They are open to hear, to understand, and to become in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so we're continuing our series on divine blueprint but we are branching off a little bit to looking at what I call perfected obedience hallelujah perfected obedience perfected obedience and I want us to open our spirit as God speaks to us today because grace is going to be released to us Not tomorrow, but today. Right now, as you hear the word, grace will be released. And so what are the learning objectives? You know, like we always say that every time God speaks, there's always something he's expecting. And those are usually our learning objectives. Why is God taking us through this part of the series? One, he wants us to understand what constitutes perfected obedience. Hallelujah. 
He wants us to understand what constitutes perfected obedience. Number two, he wants us to know how to access resources to build according to divine blueprint. He wants us to know how to access resources to build according to divine blueprint. Number three, God wants us to understand what lies on the other side of our obedience. He wants us to know what lies on the other side of our obedience. And of course, number four, he wants us to offer to him in this season perfected obedience. That is what is expected from us. And for us as finishers, to finish is actually to perfect. Hallelujah. To finish is to what? Is to perfect. You know, when we say finish, finish means perfection. That's what it means. It means perfection. It means to make complete. The Greek word is teleos. Teleos. To perfect, to make complete, to make whole, lacking nothing. Having everything it needs to be complete. And that is what God is expecting from us. Particularly the finishing generation. The perfection of all his purposes on earth. But we can't perfect his purposes on earth if his purposes are not perfected within us as individuals. We can't perfect his purposes on earth if his purposes are not being perfected in our families. We can't perfect his purposes on earth if his purposes are not being perfected in our kingdom community, the Phoenician church. And so you would see that everything that God does moves from the micro to the macro. Hallelujah. Because for us to be able to finish globally, there has to be a finishing in our individual lives. There has to be. There has to be. Our ability to be able to bring God's macro and global purposes to completion on earth is dependent on our ability to be able to bring his purposes, his micro purposes in our lives to completion. And we are the generation that God has activated in this season to bring his purposes to the finish. Meaning to perfect his purposes. To bring his purposes to completion. And that is why this is very important to us. Perfected obedience is very important to us. So what is perfected obedience? Perfected obedience also means completed or complete obedience. Obedience that has, that has been completed, finished. And it means building everything that God has committed to us according to divine blueprint. Perfected obedience means building Everything that God has committed to us according to divine blueprint. Partial obedience is not perfected obedience. As a matter of fact, in the kingdom of God, partial obedience is disobedience. When you obey halfway, it's actually disobedience to God. So what God is looking out for is complete obedience. Perfected obedience. That is what God is looking out for. So we are not of the generation that wants to offer God the barest minimum. We are not the generation that will offer God, God, this is how much we can give you. We are not that generation. In the past, there has been generations in the past that have offered God what they could, what they felt they could. But in these last days, God is raising a generation 
that will give God what God wants. Not what they can offer. Not what they can spare. Not what they can manage. God is raising a finishing generation that will give God what God wants. Hallelujah. And you are part of that finishing generation. God has called us to be part of that finishing generation. Like I said, we will not give God what we can muster. We won't give God what we can manage to put together. No. And the reason why this is important is because we are the last day church. It's in the same vein that we say that we are not the 30 fold church. We are not the 60 fold church. We are the 100 fold church. Perfected obedience. Perfected obedience. That is what is required for us to be able to finish. Without perfected obedience, we can't finish. Without perfected obedience, we can't bring all of God's purposes to finish. And we can't facilitate the return of Jesus Christ. So perfected obedience is required for us to finish. I'm referring to the ultimate finish. Perfected obedience is required for us to be able to bring all of God's purposes to completion on earth. And as you're hearing this word from me this morning, I need you to know that this grace is being released. The grace to help us give God perfected obedience is being released. Hallelujah. And so all you need to do is open your heart to receive it. Because what God also does with this series is that he, he opens our eyes and our heart to possibilities that are in him. Hallelujah. And so you're sitting down here prior to now and you've been wondering, is it possible to truly be able to live a life that is completely pleasing to God? In case you have been having that kind of transaction, I am here to tell that it is possible. And yet, we know that it is not by power, it is not by might, right? And so I'm also here to let you know that the grace to live a life that is pleasing to God is available. And it is within reach. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 25 verse 40. We have read this. God told Moses. He said be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. In other words, God was demanding from Moses perfected obedience. Make everything according to the pattern I have shown you. Make everything according to the divine blueprint. And it was recalled again in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5. It says they served or they served at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. That's all of those patterns. And he said, this is why Moses was warned. Look at that. In Hebrews, he's saying it as what? As a warning. Moses was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. New Testament. See to it that you do what? You make everything according to the design I have shown you here on the mountain. Perfected obedience. And so we are required to give God perfected obedience. We are required to build according to divine blueprint. And the grace is available. Hallelujah. The grace is available. So perfected obedience is building every aspect of your life according to divine blueprint. And every day you wake up and you fill your lungs with air. That is another opportunity to build further. Hallelujah. It's an opportunity. 
So every day you wake up is not just an opportunity to make more money. Every day you wake up is not just, just an opportunity, you know, to live a good life. You are not living for a good life. We are not living for a good life. We are, li we are living for what? God life. To please God. And so every day you wake up, it's another opportunity to contribute to what you're building. To perfect what you're building. Hallelujah. So you wake up tomorrow morning, you need to remind yourself another opportunity to perfect this building process. Another opportunity to perfect the building of my marriage. Another opportunity to perfect the building of my life. Every day you wake up, that's what you do. To perfect that which God has committed to you. Because that is a standard. Perfected obedience. Noah chapter 6, yeah, it's a Noah, Genesis chapter 6, just taking patterns from the life of Noah, Moses, Solomon, and the rest of them. So Noah, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 22 that we have read, what did the Bible say? Noah did everything just as who commanded him? God. In other words, he perfected his obedience. Like I said, one of the things that God is using this series to do is to help us see the possibility of perfected obedience. So when you sit around people, like what Lady Kemp was sharing during the quarry session, that when you sit around people who think that yeah, it is not good to. It is not possible to have a great marriage. It's a matter of time. You just rest in that belief system, and then you will be expecting your marriage to start having issues. And it's just before you know it, those issues will start coming up. So the same way, when you live around people and you interact with people, who say, "Well, please, this God life is not possible. It's not possible to be perfect. It's not possible to be holy." It's not possible to live a life of purity. You will begin to find excuses why you should not live holy. Hallelujah. So what God is doing to us is that he's letting us know that the grace to be perfect, the grace for perfected obedience is available. And today, we're living in the midst of the nuance. Hallelujah. We're living in the midst of the Moseses, right? Because we have these dimensions. These dimensions are available to us. One of the things that Lady Kemp said this morning that really stood out very strongly is that God will not leave himself without a witness. So every time you think something is not possible in God, you better check it out again. As long as there's a witness that has done it, you have no excuse. Yeah, you have no excuse. That's why the Bible says, see, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a witness to everybody. So that when all is said and done, you will not have an excuse. So God will not leave himself without a witness. So what we've been interacting with over time are the witnesses of God demonstrating to us that it is possible to offer God perfected obedience. We have a witness in Noah telling us it is possible to build according to divine blueprint. It is possible to give God what God wants. So Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Perfected obedience. Noah offered God perfected obedience. Noah did not have the Bible at the time he offered God this perfected obedience. Noah didn't have the technology that we have today. The technology of his day was crude. He used wood, a particular kind of wood, to build the ark. He had to understand forestry, to understand and to know and to recognize gopher wood. 
He had to understand the different kinds of trees that were in his day. And then he had to go search for that particular tree. Because God was very emphatic. Go for wood. Wood no be wood. In the context of God, wood no be wood. In the context of God, you can't just say this is this. Is. No, it's not. It has to be what God wants. What is wood to God in the context of Noah is what? Gopher wood. If it is not gopher wood, that would be what? Partial obedience. And partial obedience, I have said in the kingdom, means what? Disobedience. And so we have a weakness in Noah. And so when you reflect on what God has committed to you to build, and you're hearing negative voices telling you it's not possible to live a perfect life. It is not possible for your marriage to be everything God has designed it to be. You have a witness in Noah. And then Exodus chapter 39 from verse 42 to 43. The Bible says that the Israelites had done all the work just as the Lord had what? Commanded Moses. Perfected obedience. Regarding the tabernacle. And then Moses inspected the work and saw that they had done it just as the Lord had commanded. So Moses blessed them. Perfected obedience. Regarding the building of the tabernacle, Moses and the children of Israel offered God perfected obedience. And then again in Exodus chapter 40 verse 33, Then Moses set up the courtyard around the tabernacle and altar and put up the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard. And so Moses finished the work. In other words, Moses perfected the work. Moses tellios the work. He finished it. He perfected it. He completed it. Moses is a witness. That is why I tell us from time to time that the excuses we give ourselves here, they will not be tenable before God. Most of us, we have excuses why we are not doing what we're supposed to do. We have excuses why we're not living the way we're supposed to live. We have excuses, and these excuses are valid to us, and we hold them to our chest. Some of us are very proud of them. Some of us, if you see the way we eulogize our excuses, the way we are so proud of our excuses, so when you are saying to the person, say, can't you see what I've gone through? Can't you see what I'm going through? Can't you see what I have to deal with? That is why I am unable to. They are very valid to you. But I tell you, they will not be tenable before God. You have a witness. In Moses. First Kings chapter 6 from verse 12. The Bible says that as for this temple you are building... If you follow my decrees, can you see that? As for what? The temple. Because you see, the temple was very important to God. And that's how your temple, you, you're very important to God. That's why I said to us, you can't just put anything you like into this temple. And your temple has three compartments, spirit, soul, and body. Sometimes some people will say when you sin or you commit a immorality, it's your, it's your flesh that is committing it. And they make it feel like it's not your spirit that is sinning, so it's okay. No. That is a forever saved gospel people. No. Your temple is a living sacrifice. It's a living sacrifice. And so you must be aware of what you put in this temple. You must be aware of what you eat in the natural. Because if you continue to eat junks and continue to eat too much sugar, you will destroy your physical temple. And by the time you finish destroying this physical temple, it may not be the years that God has apportioned to you. You will check out and God will be like, stupid, go and sit down. I gave you a vessel to take care of, but you didn't use it well. That is why here we encourage everybody, make sure you live a balanced life. Balanced life. That's why here we have community workout sessions. 
We had one yesterday. Some of you didn't show up. And you will not exercise at home. You must take care of this vessel. You must. And then you have excuses. Why? And those excuses are very tenable to you. Why you can't exercise once a week? Why you can't build structures around your, the, the well-being of your body, which is a gift? You have excuses. In the same vein, you have to be mindful of what you consume in your mind. You have to be mindful of the media content you consume. You have to be mindful of the kind of messages you hear in your spirit. Because like I've said to us, it's not every message that we teach in church today that God is saying. It's not. You must be mindful. Hallelujah. And so what was a physical temple for David and Solomon is now your body, your life. So he said, as for this temple you are building, you know, because Solomon, you know, got a lot of other things wrong, right? But God was very particular. See, this temple is very dear to me. God knew in the midst of doing all of that, you will have plenty of concubines. God knew in the midst of all of doing you will have plenty, you know, and all of that. But regarding this temple, no compromises. Regarding this temple that I'm, com I'm coming to dwell in, you must build it according to the blueprint. So as for this temple you are building, if you follow my decrees, carry out my regulations, and keep all my commands and obey them, I will fulfill through you the promise I gave to David your father. And I will live among the Israelites, and I will not abandon my people Israel. And then the Bible says, so Solomon did what? Finished building the temple. He perfected the building. He completed the building. Hallelujah. Telios, finish. We see pattern in our Lord Jesus Christ as well. John chapter 19 verse 30. The Bible says when Jesus, reading from NLT, when Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is what? It is finished. Then he bowed his head. And gave up his spirit. It is what? Finished. Telios. Perfected. Completed. Done. Hallelujah. It is finished. It is finished. Completed. Done. And so we have seen. That Noah offered God a perfected obedience. Moses offered God a perfected obedience. Solomon offered God a perfected obedience. Jesus offered God a perfected obedience. These are our witnesses. And God is saying to you and I today that what he is looking out for from us in relation to the building of his temple, which is your life, is perfected obedience. Hallelujah. And so you can see how deliberate God is about naming names. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes we live our lives and we think we are insignificant. I'm just in one corner of one village. God will not know that I'm there. No, you're significant. You see God naming names. Even the, the temple that Solomon built is called the Temple of Solomon. The ark that Noah built is called what? Noah's ark. So, what you are building will be named after you. What is the quality of what you are building? Henry's ark. Henry, how is that ark evolving? Uncle B's ark. Uncle B, how is that ark evolving? Elijah's temple. Elijah, how is that temple evolving? When all is said and done, when the books are opened, will it be said of you that you built and you finished? 
Will it be said that Sharon built the ark and she completed it? Will it be said that Shaddai built the ark, built the temple, and perfected it? You are known. You may not be popular here in time, but you are popular in heaven. You may not have a significant life, in quote, here in time, but you are significant in heaven because you are building for God. The life you are living is the building that you are building for God. The life you are living is a temple that you are building for God. When all is said and done, what will be the testimony of your building process? Will it be said that Lady Ukamaka finished according to the command that was given to her? Will it be said that AY built according to the blueprint that was delivered to him? You are significant in heaven. And that is why you will see God, you see in the Bible, name me of names. You see people, name me of names. And so God is saying, what has been written and will be written concerning what you are building for God. In the books of deeds, where God is taking note of our building process, so what is being written concerning what you are building for God right now? If God were to open your eyes to see the book of deeds, your chapter, this is Deji's life. You know, because the blueprint, like I said, on that day, God will bring the blueprint as he designed it here. And then he will bring the finished product as you executed it on earth, side by side. And so you're here today. Do not say you've not heard. You can't say you don't know the standard. The blueprint, as it exists in the heart of God, God will put it here. The finished construction, the finished product, as you have lived your life here, God will place side by side. That will be part of the judgment that all of us will experience. How are you building? What, is, what, what do you think is being written concerning your life? What is being written concerning your marriage? What is being written concerning how you're building this temple? And what will be the final record when you appear before God? So God is saying, this is what I want from you. Perfected obedience. And God is saying, you have witnesses. People who have gone ahead of you and offered me perfected obedience. So you have no excuse. And grace has been released. Grace has been released. All you need to do is just look at the possibilities. No one did it. I can do it. Moses did it, I can do it. Solomon did it, I can do it. Jesus did it, I can do it. Paul did it, I can do it. That's why Paul said, I have finished my race. I have perfected my assignment. The finish. Our time is fast spent, but let's take a look at this. Let's see if we can finish this second objective. So we have looked at what perfected, uh, perfected obedience is and how it applies to divine blueprint. So let's look at accessing resources to build. You know, the difference between the guy that got the five talents, two talents, those guys that got the five talents and two talents, from the guy that got one talent is an appreciation of what God has given them, one, it's also their perception of God. Right? You see, God will not give you an assignment and not back you up with resources. He will not. 
The guy that was given one talent, he went and hid it, and he was referring to God as a hard taskmaster. That is the attitude of a lot of Christians today. Anytime you say it is not possible to live holy, you are telling God who is demanding holiness from you that he is a hard taskmaster. He wants to reap where he did not sow. It is not in the nature of God to reap where he did not sow. It is not in the nature of God to demand from you what he has not given you. Like I said, if he's demanding holiness from you, it's because he has given it. If he's demanding purity from you, it's because he has resourced you to live pure. If he's demanding righteousness from you, it is because he has empowered you to live righteous. If he's demanding Christ likeness from you, it's because he has already what? Sown Christ as a seed. And he wants to reap you as a fruit. So every time we sit back and we tell God what he's demanding from us and we say it's not possible. Do you know how we tell him? By giving up. By not trying. By not putting in the effort. By sitting down with people that say it's not possible to please God and believe in them. That is how you tell God that he is a hard taskmaster. Ripping from where he did not sow. But if every day you're conscious about the way you're living. Every day you're telling yourself it is possible to please God. Every day you're not there yet but you're taking the next right step. You are focusing on the next right step. Every day. You are prioritizing pleasing the Father. Every day. You are asking God. How can I please you today? How can my week be more productive for you this week? Than the previous week? How can I live a better life this week than I did last week? If every day you commit to that. You are on the right path. But if you say, mm, and then you rest in it. Or say, let's say you, you've made a mistake. Rather than dust yourself and say, oh, this is not who I am. This mistake does not define me. Father, your word defines me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is your standard. I embrace your standard. Even though, yes, I have made a mistake and you are forgiving me. I am choosing to move forward. But if you then decide to then sit down in that rough you are actually telling God, God, you want to reap where you have not sown. And what happened to that servant? When God showed up, God said, what he had. This guy was just, I mean, who gave you talent? He resourced you. He gave you something to trade with. That's the same way he is doing to us now. He is resourcing us for perfected obedience. He is resourcing us for a life of holiness. He is resourcing us for a life of purity. He is resourcing us for a life that will eventually become like Christ. You can't say God wants to reap from where he has not sown. That won't be correct. That is not in line with his nature. Every demand God is placing on you, he has resourced you for it. You just need to look well. You need to appreciate what is in your hand. You need to appreciate the resources he has put around you. You need to be able to access these resources. You need to appreciate what God has put on the inside of you. It is not in his nature to demand from you what he has not given you. It's not. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible says that his divine power has given us 
everything we need for what? A godly life. Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. You can take this to the bank. His divine power has given us everything we need for living a godly life. How will I go to God and say, God, at the end of this, I'm so sorry, God, I, I couldn't build the finishing church the way you wanted because? Because what? Where, how? How will I find something to fill in that gap because of what? No. I won't have any excuse. There won't be any excuse that will be tenable. To say, sorry, I couldn't build my marriage because he has given us everything that we need. Amplified version says, for his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness. Everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness. The message translation says, everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us. <laughs> Can you see that? Everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been what? Miraculously given to us. What excuse will I have? Am I going to say it's the word of God that is lying? Am I going to argue with God on that day and say, no, God, you, yeah, you said this word, but I don't believe you. You didn't do what you said. No. No. Yes. If I did not walk in the reality of what he has put in place, it's not his making. It is mine. That is why we are looking at assessing divine resources. You must be able to see what are these resources. Where are they located? How do I get them? It is the glory of God to do what? To conceal a matter. It is the honor of kings to what? To search it out. That's why they say, even in law, ignorance of the law is what? It's no excuse. That you're not even aware that that law has been passed. If you flout it, you will collect the... Koboko. And then we think when we go before God, we will be able to argue our way against his word when even he himself honors his word above his name, above his reputation. <sighs> nah. Nah. So everything you need, everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been given to us. It has. So God is not demanding from you what he has not given you. And so I want to ask, how long do you want to sit back and complain? How long do you want to sit back and give excuses? Why you can't read your Bible? Why you can't be consistent with God? Why you can't Live a life that God is demanding from you in this season. Do you think the excuses you give me will be tenable before him? How long do we want to do that for? We have no excuse. We have no excuse. Because everything has been given to us. Hallelujah. Everything has been given to you. It is the glory of God to conceal the matter. It is the honor of kings to search it out. You just have to discover those resources. Hallelujah. The same way you were able to access resources that have helped you build your life to where you are now is the same way you must continue to access those other resources 
that will help you live a life of holiness. Live a life that is pleasing to God. I tell people, you see the same faith you used to claim that job. That same faith you used to claim that healing. It is the same faith you, need, you used to claim your holiness. It is the same faith you need to claim purity. It is the same faith you need to claim righteousness. It does, it's not higher. It's the same. It's the same. It's just a lie of the enemy that comes and whispers to our minds that it's not possible to please God. That it's not possible to please to live a life that is pleasing to God. That God is such anything God is hard. No. He said, My burden is light, my yoke is easy. It's not hard. The grace is there. It's only hard on the flesh. Are you willing to let the flesh go? Like what Lady Kemp said this morning, he said the flesh is not worried. The flesh knows that it's going down. So it's not going into eternity with you. So if the flesh knows that it's not going to eternity with you, why do you want the flesh to drag you down to where it's going to? You must rise above the flesh. You must let the flesh die. How do you kill the flesh? When you, when you, every time you choose God, you kill the flesh. Every time you choose God. Every time you choose God. You wake up in the morning and you know it's time for prayer. You wake up in the morning and you know it's time to study. And then your body is fighting it. Your body is like it sleeps some more. Your body is like you don't have the time. Your body is like quickly go to work. And then Babylon is harassing your mind. And all the assignments that you need to deliver, they are all coming at you. And then you yield to them. That is you elevating your flesh. And keeping the flesh alive. But if in the midst of all of that, you say, no, I must talk to my father first. Hallelujah. So every time those things come at you, and you are like, I know, I must please my father. I must talk to my father first. I must I have to talk to my father. I have to study my Bible. Every time things come at you and say, ah, you know you don't, these two hours that you want to go and give for deep dive, you know you don't have it. You know you can just use it to rest. You know you've been working all day. Ah, and you know your boss is very demanding. Can, why not just sleep some more? Just, you know, just sleep. Pastor will understand. After all, if he doesn't even understand, let him do whatever he wills with it. That's what the flesh will tell you. After all, you are your own, your life. So why not just sleep? See, that opportunity that you have to do something, and then he's telling you, oh, don't do it, you know, and then you relax into it. Do you know what you're doing? What you've done, and you're doing is you're elevating the flesh. You're elevating the flesh. But every time you yield to God, what you do is that you put the flesh under. Hallelujah. Every time you say yes to God, you kill the flesh. Every time you say yes to God, you have defeated the flesh. Every time you choose God, you have defeated the flesh. Because every day, multiple choices, everyday decisions that will require that you either choose God or you choose yourself. We are confronted with them every day. Hallelujah. That is how we walk in the will of the Father. And that's why we say it's about doing the next right thing. God is not hard. God is not a hard taskmaster. Don't see him that way. Don't see him. It's a lie of the enemy that tells you that everything about God is hard. Kilo day. And me, me, I just want to relax. Can I just not catch my breath? Yeah. Now I've woken up again. Now I have to shower. Quarry session. Why did Pastor even come up with this quarry session, self? And we go, ah, ah, so now he's going to be asking for a list of my now. Ah, me. Ah. This comment, comment, comment. Must I comment? Is your flesh. Is your flesh. 
Every day. Every day. Hallelujah. And I said to the guys yesterday that came out for the workout, I said, God is not hard. Becoming everything that God has designed us to be is not difficult. It's not. Can you just take it each day? Hallelujah. Now, glory be to God, you're here today, right? Huh? That's fine. Just take it like that. Don't calculate all the Sundays in 2024 and begin to think about the transportation cost. <laughs> Calculate all the deep dive sessions in 2024 and say how many deep dives you have in a month? Four. How much is it? How much is a uh, boat now? Hey. And then you now calculate it and weigh it against your salary. My goodness. Ah, I will skip some more. <laughs> Wisdom is profitable to direct. <laughs> no, no. You won't be able to please God that way. Just take it today. Today, just obey now. That's all. And then when you move to the next one, obey. It is the accumulation of these daily decisions that sometimes may seem insignificant at the moment. They are the ones that will come together and make you become like Christ. They are the ones that will come together and make you live a life of holiness. When you are going through social media and you are seeing you know, those images that you know have the capacity to mess up your mind, your ability to say, no, I will not consume this content. You put it aside. And then you continue. You go and get a content that will edify. And then you're going. And then another day, you see another content where woman, a woman is showing body part and all that. You skip it and say, no, I will not consume this. That is how to live a life of holiness. Every day. Decisions you make. Every day. But if the first time you see it, ah, you relished it and you stay there. And you say, just one time now. I, mean, I didn't hurt anybody. I didn't do anything. Okay? And then the next day, you see it again, you won't be able to say no. The third day, you see it again, you won't be able to say no. A time is coming, you see that thing that you have been thinking in your mind, it will manifest in the physical. That's why we say marriages don't fall in a day. Men don't fall in a day. No, 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 no. What in a day? You would have been neglecting. You would have been disobeying. You would have been elevating the flesh above the spirit. Gradually, gradually, gradually. And then it happens. You see, a life of holiness and perfection is the same thing. Just do the next right thing. That's all. It's not hard. That's not hard. So don't calculate all of the Wednesdays in February and in March. And say, oh, this is just come for the next one. Can I get an amen? Right? Just come for this one. Just come. This next Wednesday that is coming. Now just come. That's all. Hallelujah. That is how to please God. I'm serious. God is not hard. It's our flesh that makes the things of God hard. It's not hard. I know some of you, you've read the Bible in the last couple of months than you have read your entire life. Yes? And you never believed that you could read the Bible that much. We just finished Exodus, 40 chapters. If from the beginning of when we are starting Exodus, what is in your mind? You are calculating all the verses in each chapter. And you are multiplying all of them by 40 days. Say, ah, ah, not only Bible I go to read. <laughs> in your mind, it will be like, this is too big. But, if you can be like, okay, just one chapter a day. Out of 24 hours that I have, just one chapter that will likely take me 15 minutes. Done. So, okay. The one, one chapter. Ba, 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 ba. You're done. In 15 minutes, you comment. A few seconds. It's done. Huh. Great. And then day two. Chapter two. Ba, 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 ba. 15 minutes. You're done. Huh. Day three. 15 minutes. You're done. That is how you finish 40 chapters. Every day. What you commit to every day. It's just saying yes to God every day. That's all. Just say yes to God every day. That's all. God is not hard. He's not a hard taskmaster. This life of holiness is possible. This life of purity is possible. This life of righteousness is possible. Becoming like Christ is possible. 
Don't let the devil tell you otherwise. Don't let the devil tell you otherwise. And I shared with the team yesterday, you want to write a book. And the book has seven chapters. And somehow, the seven chapters are just such a big deal to you. Can you break it down? Can you say, okay, I want to write a chapter a month. Can you just write that chapter first? Don't think about the seven. You see, one of the reasons we feel paralyzed anytime we hear holiness and anytime we hear Christ-likeness you're thinking about the totality of the final product. So once you think about that, it cripples you. And then the enemy will remind you of your shortcoming of yesterday and tell you, you know, you can't do it. That's what happens. Can you just think about the next right thing? And then you look at your life and you look at the context of our kingdom community. What will be the next right thing when I wake up tomorrow morning? It will be praying and studying my Bible. Then let me do it. On Tuesday, what will be the next right thing to do? Tuesday is community fast. I am committing to fasting once a week. As we wake up in the morning, make sure you set your alarm. Some of you missed our last uh, morning prayer. Set your alarm, and then you wake up 5.30, and then we pray for maybe 45 minutes, one hour. That's the next right thing. Then you read your Bible. That's all. Hallelujah. And then on Wednesday, there's opportunity for deep dive so that we can unpack this message. You just come. That's all. That is how you build consistently. I mean, go ask all these athletes how, how they arrived at where they are. Where some of them will be like every day. They commit to a routine every day. Today, you are hearing their names all over the place. Every day. My goodness. That is how to build for God. That is how to build. Hallelujah. And so I want to remind you today that whatever it is that God is demanding from you, you have the capacity. If anything is telling you you don't have the capacity, that thing is lying to you. It is not in the nature of your father to demand from you what he has not resourced you for. It is not in the nature of your father to demand from you what he has not given you. Hallelujah. So you can be everything that God has designed you to be. You can offer God perfected obedience. Let's rise on our faith. And I want us to respond to this word. And I want you to respond to the possibilities that God has shown you today. Respond to the possibilities that God has shown you today. That's why the Bible says, do not worry about what you will eat tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough worries of its own. So the principle there is, is not that don't plan for tomorrow. The principle there is that can you just do the right thing today? Can you just, just focus on today, the right thing today? That's the principle. The moment you start thinking, it will look too big. And I want us to begin to pray. I begin to declare right now, I can. I can, Father. I can. I can be everything you have designed me to be. I can offer you perfected obedience. I can live a life of purity. I can be consistent in my work with you. <laughs> my goodness, it was said of Jesus that he was tempted, but he did not sin. My goodness, I know there will be temptations, Father. I work in that harvest. That when the temptations come, Father, help me to respond to you. We have witnesses that have gone ahead of us. Noah was a man that had the reputation of being righteous. The Bible says he was a perfect man in his day. He was blameless. Noah is a witness. It was said of Enoch. Enoch walked with God. He was perfect. He was blameless. That is a witness. And God is saying, these witnesses have gone ahead of you. Can you just look into the possibilities that their life espoused to you? And say, Father, I can. I can. 
I can be consistent with you. I can journey with you consistently till the end of time without fail. I can be consistent in holiness. I can be consistent in purity. I can be consistent in the structures of my intimacy and consecration. <laughs> I pull down grace. I harness the resources you have made available to me. It is not in your nature to demand from me what you have not resourced me for. And I know that there will be no excuse. I will be tenable before you, oh God. And so, Father, I believe. I believe I can offer you perfected obedience. I believe I can build my life according to divine design. I believe I can finish well and finish strong. I believe I can fully become like Christ. I harness the resources I have made available. I will no longer listen to the lies of the enemy that tells me that I am a slave to this weakness. I am here to tell you that you are not a slave to that weakness. You are not helpless in that situation. Come on, rise above it. The power of God is available to you. The grace of God is available to you. Rise above it. Rise above it. Rise above it. Rise above it. It may have been a cycle that has been continuing for a while. But God is saying you can break that cycle. Hey, God is saying you can break that cycle. Rise. And there's the resources that are available to you. Come out of that situation. Lay hold of consistency. Lay hold of holiness. Of purity of lifestyle. Lay hold of Christ likeness. Lay hold. Lay hold, lay hold, lay hold, lay hold, lay hold, lay hold. Come on now. Come on now, you are not helpless. It doesn't matter how long you have lived with that situation, you are not helpless. You are not at the mercy of that situation. Come on, rise. Rise, rise. God is here to pull you up. God is here to pull you out. God is here. God is here. God is here. God is here. Because you have failed in the past. The enemy is telling you you are weak. I am here to tell you you are not weak. I am here to tell you that the strength of God is available to you. All you have to do is reach out. Do not settle for less, my brothers. Do not settle for less, my sisters. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You have the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Do not settle for less. Do not settle for less. Do not settle for less. Reach out for grace. Reach out, reach out, reach out. It's available to you. You are more powerful than you can ever imagine. God designed you to be powerful. God designed you to be formidable. All you need to do is align your will with his will. And see the possibilities that lie in God. And then you will begin to walk in the reality of the possibilities. You are not helpless. You are not helpless. You are not helpless. You are not helpless. Le kate le bro ma shele bro de koli ande katala bro. Ma katala bro de koli ande kahende le bro koto ma shele bro de. 
Leketele broko to makoli akatala brosko li akata Mali bronde koli ande katele brosko li ande kahinde le broko to mashele bronde Leketele broko to makoli akatala brosko li akatele brosha Le bronde kali akatala broko to mali ande katele brosko li Makatala broko to makoli akatala bronde kali akate Leketele broko to makoli akatala bronde kali akata Mashele bronde koli ande katela broko to mashele broko li Leketele bronde kali akatala broko to mali bronde Makatala broko to makuli akatela brosko li akata Receive grace to do the next right thing. Receive grace to do the next right thing. Receive grace to do the, the next right thing. <laughs> hey, la katele broskolia. Receive grace to choose God every time you are about to make that decision. And there are two options before you. Receive grace to choose God. Receive grace to choose God. You can consistently choose God. You can consistently choose God. Jesus was confronted several times with the option of checking out. But he chose God. Each time he chose God. That grace is available to you and I. That grace is available to you and I. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. You may have faltered yesterday, but today is a new day. The Bible says his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. Today is a new day. You are still here. You can still choose God today. You can choose God right now. You can choose God right now. Even after this meeting, you can choose God. Tomorrow morning, you can choose God. God is not hard. Your father is not a hard taskmaster. You are powerful. You are powerful. In him you are powerful. In him you can do all things. You can live that life. You can be consistent. You can say no to the flesh. You can say no to self. You can choose him all the time. You can rise above that weakness. You can rise above that struggle. You can rise above it. And God is saying you can. You can. You can. You can. You can. You can. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father, because we can see your grace. Thank you, Father, because we see the possibilities in you, oh God. We're not resting. <laughs> we are committed, oh God, to give you perfected obedience. We are committed, oh God, to give you perfected obedience. No one did it, we will do it. Enoch did it, we will do it. Moses did it, we will do it. Solomon did it in building the temple, we will do it. Jesus did it, we will do it. Paul did it, we will do it. We are the finishing generation. <laughs> Tell you, we are the finishing generation. We are the finishing generation. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Father, because you have given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. Everything that we need to live a life that is pleasing to you, I receive. <laughs> Everything that I need to live a life that is pleasing to you, that you have made available to me, Father, I receive. I pull it down into my life. 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 Because in Christ, I am formidable. In Christ, I am strong. I am not weak. In Christ, I can do all things. In Christ, I can give you perfected obedience. I am powerful in Christ. I am powerful in Christ. And so, Father, I pray that you give us the grace, O oh God, to desire to give you perfected obedience. Because it starts with desire. <laughs> That's where it starts from. The desire. The willingness. Saying yes to God. And Father, I also pray for the grace for us to harness all the things that you have put in place for us to please you. Help us to harness the divine resources that you have put in place. That at the end of the day, Father, 
what our life will finally become will be in alignment with the blueprint that emanated from your heart that when all is said and done and we appear before you before the white throne judgment and the records are open what will be in the records concerning our lives will match the blueprint that you've always had in your heart in the name of Jesus in every area of our lives in our character our essence in our mind our thought processes in our relationships our careers our finances our marriages in every area of our lives Father. when all is said and done it will match the original blueprint in the name of Jesus this kingdom community the finishing church when all is said and done and we are presented to you as one corporate man what you will see will be what emanated from your heart in the name of Jesus thank you for the grace to finish thank you for the grace for, for perfected obedience we give you praise father we honor and adore you in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen hallelujah let's be seated hallelujah are you encouraged are you empowered can you see the possibilities I told the team that were present the guys that were present yesterday that I can't when you're confronted with what you're supposed to do only exist here and I was sharing with them yesterday just watching everybody Sharon and Steph yesterday there was something even though Sharon had muzzle pull and she couldn't continue the workout but there was something I saw in her it was the commitment to go the way like and then I saw it in Steph I was like this this is this is what it takes really it's just a commitment so in my estimation even though Sharon had to take a break from the literal workout in my estimation she did it with us hallelujah mm, she did it she did it so it starts from that I can I see the possibility God is this what you want I can give it to you is this what you want I want to give it to you it is my desire to give it to you and then as you hold on to that resources will start flowing your way start flowing your way hallelujah that is what I want us to see in God. Everything that God is demanding from us today in the midst of these last days. It doesn't matter what the world... You know, the world can be really... It's getting darker and darker. Immorality is on the rise. Moral decadence is on the rise. No, but we're not picking our cue from that. We're looking into the heart of God and we're seeing possibilities in Him. To be the light in the midst of the growing darkness. And so that is what we must align our heart to. Not what is happening outside of God. Align your heart to what is happening in God. Because that is where your superpower lies. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Feedback on Wednesday. And so I want to encourage everybody, whatever feedback you want to give now, maybe questions or contributions, just take note of them. All right? Take note of them. And then make sure you are here on Wednesday. And folks online, please, we're conscious of you. We know you are there. And so please, 
We also want your contrib contributions as well. All right? And so, start planning. And start saying, God, I want to be here on Wednesday. And if for any reason, maybe you're traveling out of town, tell yourself, I will join online. I will join online. Amen. You see, we need to come here. This place and the spirit of knowing who we are and what's available to us. We need to. Because if our generation does not rise and commit to giving God what God wants, God will wait for another generation. A day to him, is it? Doesn't, time does not matter to him. He does not live in time. So time does not matter to him. It's us that time matters to. Time does not matter to God. God forbid, he can wait another 10,000 years. And the evil on earth will just become worse. And I don't want us to say, after all, me, I would have checked out. No, don't be like that. Let's check everybody out. You understand what I'm saying? Don't be like a Hezekiah. Hezekiah that misbehaved and God showed up and said, what have you done? And because every action in God has consequences. Even though God had forgiven him, but he must experience, you have to experience the consequences. And after God read out the consequences, he said, thank God they will not happen in my time. What a foolish father. Instead of him to repent on behalf of himself and the future generations, he did not. He said, thank God it's not in my time that these things will happen. So for us, you know, that's why the Bible says that the next expectation of the earth is what? Eagerly. The earth is groaning. It's waiting for the revealing of the sons of God. Because it is at the point of the revealing of the sons of God that the earth will be delivered. That is the point of shutting down time. Because the earth has been subjected to this corruption. Even the earth wants to come out of this whole process. Hallelujah. So I don't want to just check out and finish well as an individual. I want us to do it together and shut down time and put an end to these evils. I really cry. Last week something happened. I sobbed, I cried. And I'm just going to share this with us. I was driving home and I saw a woman with her baby about four, you know, and then she had another baby about one behind, back in the baby, and she was begging. And of course, that's a common sight all over Nigeria, beggars on the street. But this was different. I drove close and the traffic stopped and I stopped and I raised my head to look at her and she was blind. I couldn't marry those two. I couldn't put, it, it just, I couldn't. I was like, how? How? Four year old, another taller, behind, blind. When I say blind, I mean blind, you will see it. How did she get here? How will she go home? How does she eat? I reached out my wallet, I brought her some money, I gave to the boy to give her. She had no clue how much it was. Right there, I didn't know, drove. I cried. cry. Say, God. And God said to me, Fred, I didn't do that. That's not my will. I didn't do that. I said, God, how do you put up with this? You must be God to put up with this. And since that day, I, I, I've not been able to unsee it. I can't unsee that. I can't. And that is one in thousands. That is the life you and I live in. That is the world we are currently living in. And we want that to continue. There's injustice. There's I mean, it's crazy stuff. The corruption of the earth is on another level. 
And the more we stay here, and the more we delay the coming of Christ, the more the darkness will get gross. And so sometimes I say, the way we live as individuals, don't just live because of you. Can you situate yourself within the bigger purposes of God and let that calibrate how you live as an individual? Can we share in the burden that God carries for humanity? Can we walk with God at shut down time very quickly and put, just put an end to this craziness? God said, Fred, I didn't do that. It's not, that's not my will for humanity. Hallelujah. So one of the things that propels me to live and to want to please God is to just to bring an end to all of this. Because the more we waste time here, the darker it gets. LGBTQ, they are adding more now. By the time, plus, 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 plus. It's crazy. It's because we are staying too long. It's crazy. Before you rest from one another, before you, a kilo day, people are living in fear. So much, I mean, it's going to get darker. And I've been saying it for years that the world isn't going to get better. All we're doing is just slowing down the destruction so that we can save as many people as possible before then. But unfortunately, many more people are also checking out of the faith. Are you guys getting what I'm saying? Are you saying why we really just need to align with God? It's beyond us. as It's beyond me as an individual. It's beyond me as an individual. And it's beyond us as individuals. When you situate yourself within the global purpose of God, you will see the need to appreciate the life that God is asking us to live here and what he wants us to do and what he has committed to us. Look at our country today. Whoever believed that the rapidly bandits will become the order of the day. People are losing their humanity. So guys, let's please God. Let's finish the work and let's shut down time. Hallelujah. God bless you.